Texas just witnessed a mind-blowing event that's got everyone talking. I'm talking unheard of, folks. The kind of spectacle that has jaws dropping and eyes widening across the Lone Star State. And who's the star of the show? None other than the man behind Tesla and SpaceX. As the news zips through the grapevine like wildfire, Elon can't resist spilling the tea on social media. In the quiet night skies over McAllen, Texas, residents and experts witness something that's never been seen before. In fact, NASA swiftly confirmed it, the arrival of a celestial visitor, a meteorite of colossal proportions hurtling towards Earth at a mind-boggling speed of 27,000 miles per hour. As the meteorite sliced through the atmosphere, its fiery descent painted the sky in hues of what could only be described as celestial chaos. The impact was not merely a distant spectacle, it resonated with an explosive sound that echoed through McAllen, sending shockwaves that shook the very ground beneath an experience that few could forget. But that wasn't just it. Things became even more astounding when eyewitnesses captured the meteorite's dramatic streak through the heavens. Social media platforms were ablaze with photos and videos, each frame immortalizing the celestial intruder's journey. The shared visuals painted a vivid picture of the scene leaving the world collectively breathless. Elon Musk, the keen observer, added his own insights, which got people even more riled up than they already were. Could there be more to this meteorite than initially perceived? The Texas meteorite looked like a scene out of a sci-fi movie. As we dive deeper into this cosmic encounter, let's discuss. What have scientists discovered about it so far? And what does this mean for the Lone Star State? Meteorites, pieces of space debris, travel from outer space to Earth. These cosmic wanderers, also known as space rocks, enter our atmosphere with a force similar to shooting stars or fireballs. When they enter Earth's atmosphere, they become meteors, sometimes creating a bright display in our night sky. After the meteorite's descent, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, weather radar recorded the event. The visual composition of falling debris became a key resource for astronomers and those trying to find pieces of the meteorite. The radar recordings acted like a cosmic breadcrumb trail, guiding enthusiasts to potential locations where fragments of this space voyager could be found. As the dust settled, quite literally, NASA experts stepped forward, armed with calculations that unveiled the meteorite's dimensions and potential impact. Like a detective story, NASA put the pieces together and estimated the meteoroid to be about two feet in diameter, weighing a staggering 1,000 pounds, equivalent to the mass of a grand piano. However, fear not, for the narrative took an unexpected turn as NASA reassured the world that despite its grandeur, the meteorite caused no discernible damage. Talking about its sheer power, NASA likened the force unleashed to around 8 tons of TNT, a mind-boggling strength that sparks the imagination. This cosmic visitor made its impact felt, not through destruction but through a sense of awe and wonder. The paradoxical nature of a colossal force creating a gentle impact added a layer of intricacy to the celestial story, transforming what could have been a disaster into a spectacle that left the Lone Star State unharmed. As we dig into the aftermath of this cosmic encounter, it's fascinating to ponder the delicate equilibrium between the force of celestial events and the resilience of our home planet. The meteorite's journey, meticulously tracked by NOAA's radar and defined by NASA's precise calculations, serves as a cosmic reminder of the graceful dance between the vast universe and our delicate blue world. While the recent Texas meteorite event left the state unharmed, it's crucial to acknowledge the potential dangers that celestial intruders can pose to our planet. Meteorites, despite their awe-inspiring beauty, have the capacity to inflict considerable damage, and history is marked by instances where Earth faced the wrath of these cosmic visitors. Traveling back in time, there are vivid accounts of meteorites causing significant disruptions. One notable example dates back to 1908, when a mysterious explosion, known as the Tunguska event, rattled the Siberian wilderness. Though not a direct impact, the explosion, believed to be caused by an asteroid or comet, flattened an estimated 80 million trees across 2,100 square kilometers. The force of the blast was equivalent to a staggering 10 to 15 megatons of TNT, underscoring the potential devastation a celestial encounter could bring. Imagine if that had hit a city. 
Another striking incident unfolded over Chelbains, Russia in 2013. A relatively small meteor exploded in the atmosphere, releasing an energy equivalent to approximately 470 to 500 kilotons of TNT. The resultant shockwave damaged over 7,000 buildings, injured about 1,500 people, and highlighted the capacity of even modest-sized space rocks to unleash chaos. Meteorites entering Earth's atmosphere can vary in size and while may burn up harmlessly, larger ones can have more severe consequences. Earth, however, is not defenseless. Our atmosphere serves as a protective shield, disintegrating smaller meteoroids before they reach the surface. Organizations like NASA actively monitor the skies for potential threats, tracking near-Earth objects or NEOs that could pose a risk. The scientific community collaborates globally to develop strategies for deflecting or mitigating the impact of potentially hazardous celestial bodies. The recent Texas meteorite fortunately showcased the gentler side of celestial encounters. It serves as a reminder of the constant cosmic ballet occurring above us. While the vast majority of meteorites disintegrate harmlessly in the atmosphere, acknowledging the potential risks keeps us vigilant. Now, you see, it's not every day that space rocks decide to pay us a visit, and when they do, institutions like the Smithsonian step into the limelight. Think of the Smithsonian as the grand archive of artifacts from the heavens. When meteorites, those otherworldly travelers, make a pit stop on Earth, the Smithsonian is like the VIP lounge where they get an exclusive seat. These institutions have a knack for collecting and preserving these cosmic treasures. Now, why would the Smithsonian want meteorites? Well, these extraterrestrial rock stars carry secrets. Secrets about our solar system, the universe, and maybe even the origins of life. Scientists at places like the Smithsonian get their hands on these space gems to unlock these cosmic mysteries, piece by piece. Here's the fun part. Remember that meteorite that crash-landed in Texas? NASA's not just keeping it all to themselves. They want you, yes you, to join the Cosmic Detective Squad. If you happen to stumble upon a piece of that fallen space adventurer, NASA's calling for a grand celestial collaboration. So if you're out for a stroll and notice an odd-looking rock that might be from outer space, NASA wants to know about it. You could be the one to contribute to unraveling the cosmic riddles hidden within those fragments. Imagine being part of a space investigation. It's like a real-life extraterrestrial treasure hunt. Now, let's talk about rarity. These meteorite landings aren't like your everyday events. They're cosmic VIP parties. And when a meteorite decides to RSVP and touch down on Earth, it's a big deal. Scientists get giddy with excitement because these events don't happen every Tuesday. And why all the fuss? Well, these meteorites are like time capsules holding stories from the dawn of our solar system. They could be older than your grandma's grandma's grandma. So, each meteorite is not just a rock, it's a little piece of history, a snippet of the universe's journey through time. In a nutshell, institutions like the Smithsonian and NASA are the archivists of otherworldly objects, working together to uncover the tales hidden within the meteorites. So the next time you find a peculiar rock in your backyard, remember, it might just be a bit of cosmic bling waiting to spill its secrets to science. So this is a very active earthquake cluster. Uh, and it's something that's caught uh, our, our attentions. I know it's caught the attention of the oil and gas regulator, the, the Texas Railroad Commission, and, um, and folks may have some concerns. In a region where the ground rarely quakes, something extraordinary has just happened. West Texas, known for its vast deserts and rugged landscapes, was jolted by a 5.1 magnitude earthquake, something completely out of the ordinary for this area. David Muir, the trusted voice of ABC World News Tonight brought this shocking news to the nation's attention. His report left viewers on the edge of their seats, wondering, what does this mean for West Texas? Could it happen again? Let's dive into the details of this unprecedented event and uncover what scientists say might be coming next. The epicenter in Hermel, a quiet village turned ground. Situated in the rugged landscape of West Texas, Hermel is a village where time seems to stand still. Known for its peaceful surroundings and close-knit community, Hermel has always been a place where folks live quietly, far from the hustle and bustle of big cities. But on that fateful day, everything changed. Hermel found itself at the very heart of the 5.1 magnitude earthquake. 
a rare and terrifying event for the region. The ground that had always felt so solid beneath the villagers' feet suddenly became a force of nature, shaking homes and rattling nerves. In an instant, this quiet village was thrust into the spotlight as the epicenter of an unprecedented tremor. The shockwaves spread out from Hermel, reaching far beyond its borders, leaving residents and experts alike in disbelief. How could such a powerful earthquake strike in a place like this? The mystery only deepens as the story unfolds. But the impact didn't stop in Hermel. The tremors were felt far and wide, leaving a trail of questions and concerns in their wake. Ripple effects. Tremors felt across North Texas and Dallas. The shockwaves from the earthquake didn't just stop at Hermel. They traveled far, rippling outwards and reaching places that had never felt such a force before. In North Texas, residents were startled by the sudden jolt many of them feeling the ground tremble beneath their feet for the first time in their lives. In Dallas, the heart of urban life in Texas, the impact was unsettling. Skyscrapers swayed, and people inside could feel the tremors even on the upper floors. Social media lit up with frantic posts as people shared their experiences, some wondering if what they felt was real. Could an earthquake really be shaking the city? It was a moment of collective confusion as people tried to process what had just happened. Emergency services were quickly overwhelmed with calls, as people reported everything from cracked walls to fallen objects. Though there was no significant damage, the psychological impact was undeniable. In a region where earthquakes are more the stuff of movies than reality, the tremor was a wake-up call leaving many to wonder just how safe they really were. The reach of the earthquake was far greater than anyone could have imagined, making it clear that West Texas was not the only area affected. The tremor had set off a wave of anxiety across the state, with people now questioning what might come next, especially since this threatening quake had come with an earlier warning. A week of anxiety. Smaller tremors. Foreshadowing the big one, the 5.1 magnitude earthquake that rocked West Texas was not just an isolated incident. It was the climax of a nerve-wracking week that had the entire region on edge. In the days leading up to the big quake, there were smaller tremors. Subtle at first, barely noticeable to anyone but the most observant. But as the week wore on, these minor shakes became more frequent, each one a little stronger than the last, leaving residents with a growing sense of unease. It started with what many dismissed as a passing vibration, maybe a large truck rumbling down the road or the wind playing tricks on their senses. But as more reports came in, it became clear that these weren't ordinary events. From Hermel to the outskirts of Dallas, people were beginning to take note. The ground seemed restless, and with each passing day, the sense of foreboding grew. By midweek, the tremors were no longer something that could be shrugged off. Some residents in North Texas began to experience a series of jolts that rattled windows and caused light fixtures to sway. Though still minor, these tremors were enough to get people talking, with many wondering if something bigger was brewing beneath the surface. Conversations in grocery stores, cafes, and even online began to shift from the usual small talk to uneasy speculation. Was this a warning? Could West Texas, known more for its open plains and oil fields, really be on the verge of a significant earthquake? The anxiety was palpable as residents braced themselves, not knowing if these tremors were just the prelude to something much more dangerous. Then came the 5.1 magnitude quake, a powerful release of pent-up energy that many feared would be the big one. It was as if the Earth had been sending out warnings all week, and now, it had finally unleashed its fury. While the smaller tremors had been unsettling, this was a full-blown event, one that people would not soon forget. But even after the dust settled, the anxiety lingered. The question on everyone's mind, were these tremors just the beginning? What else could be lurking beneath the surface, waiting to strike? Breaking point. Structural damage and emergency response in Scurry County. When the 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit West Texas, 
Scurry County found itself at the heart of the chaos. In an area not accustomed to significant seismic activity, the quake served as a brutal wake-up call. Buildings that had stood for decades without incident were suddenly vulnerable, and the impact was felt far and wide across the county. The tremors rattled homes, causing walls to crack and foundations to shift. In some cases, roofs sagged under the sudden strain and windows shattered, sending glass spraying across rooms. The older historic structures in particular bore the brunt of the quake, with several experiencing significant damage. Some residents reported that the ground itself seemed to ripple beneath their feet, a terrifying reminder of the raw power of the earth. Local authorities were quick to respond, but the scale of the damage posed an enormous challenge. Within minutes of the quake, emergency services were mobilized. Firefighters and police raced to assess the most critical areas, while medical teams prepared for the possibility of casualties. The county's emergency response plan, more often reserved for wildfires or severe storms, was put to the test in an entirely new context. First responders worked tirelessly, navigating debris-strewn streets and making their way into damaged homes to ensure that residents were safe. In some cases, families were evacuated from homes deemed too dangerous to stay in, while temporary shelters were quickly set up to accommodate those displaced by the quake. The local community also sprang into action with neighbors helping neighbors and volunteers offering assistance wherever they could. But even as the initial response unfolded, there was an air of uncertainty. How extensive was the damage, really? Would more tremors follow or was this the worst of it? And perhaps most importantly, why had this happened in the first place? The answers to these pressing questions lie in the science behind the shaking. Oh, and be warned, what scientists say triggered this unprecedented event may come across as shocking. The science behind the shaking. Understanding the 5.1 magnitude quake. When the ground started shaking across West Texas, scientists and seismologists quickly jumped into action to understand exactly what had happened. But how do they determine the strength of an earthquake and what does a 5.1 magnitude really mean? Let's break it down in simple terms. Earthquakes release energy in the form of seismic waves that travel through the Earth's crust. These waves are picked up by sensitive instruments called seismographs, which are strategically placed all around the world, including right here in Texas. The moment the quake occurred, these seismographs began recording the vibrations, creating a detailed picture of the event. To determine the earthquake's magnitude, scientists analyze the data collected by these seismographs. They look at the amplitude of the seismic waves, their height and intensity, and the distance the waves have traveled. Using a scale known as the Richter scale, they assign a number that represents the quake's size and energy release. A 5.1 magnitude earthquake, like the one that shook West Texas, is considered moderate. It releases a significant amount of energy, enough to cause noticeable shaking and some damage, especially in areas not built to withstand such forces. To put it into perspective, each whole number increase on the Richter scale represents a tenfold increase in measured amplitude and about 31 times more energy release. So, while a 5.1 quake isn't the most powerful, it's certainly strong enough to make its presence known. What makes this particular earthquake so significant is its rarity in the region. West Texas isn't typically known for seismic activity of this magnitude, making the event both surprising and concerning. Every year, Earth finds itself caught in a cosmic rain shower of shooting stars. These aren't your run-of-the-mill stars, they're meteoroids, tiny cosmic particles that decide to make a grand entrance into our atmosphere. We call this yearly display a meteor shower, and it's like our planet putting on its own glittery light show. NASA, being the cosmic event planner, tracks these meteor showers, giving us the lowdown on when and where the best shows will be. From the Perseids in August to the Geminids in December, it's a celestial calendar packed with sparkling performances. And take a wild guess where most of these sightings will be. Texas, exactly. You've been following. Now, apart from meteorites, these are another set of cosmic daredevils, asteroids. These rocky wanderers cruise through space and occasionally they decide to pay Earth a visit. NASA's got the scoop on these cosmic travelers, ranging from car-sized cruisers to behemoths as large as a football field. 
The cool part? They don't just fly by, some actually dive into Earth's atmosphere, creating those spectacular fireballs that light up the night sky. But fear not, NASA's eagle-eyed astronomers are on the lookout, ensuring we're well prepared for those cosmic rendezvous. Most of the space rocks burn up in the atmosphere, giving us a show without any backstage drama. Now, let's unravel the mystery behind these meteor showers. Comets, those icy celestial nomads, leave behind a trail of crumbs as they journey through space. When Earth crosses paths with these trails, the crumbs light up, creating a meteor shower. It's like Earth waltzing through a comet's celestial confetti. And asteroids? They add their own flair. Some meteor showers have ties to asteroids, like the Geminids. These connections turn into our meteor showers into a celestial dance, where Earth swirls through remnants of comets and asteroids, leaving us in awe of the cosmic choreography above. So next time you find yourself gazing at a meteor shower, remember, it's not just a random light show, it's a cosmic ballet, a dance between Earth and the remnants of celestial travelers. A spectacle that NASA, our sky guide, helps us unravel year after year. Recently, Musk's observations on the quadranted meteor shower are adding a dash of excitement to the Texas night skies. The quadranted, a celestial spectacle that graces our skies from mid-November to mid-January, took center stage in the recent cosmic drama over Texas. They are from a meteor shower, but not just any meteor shower, but potentially the strongest in the entire cosmic lineup of 2024. This is where Elon Musk steps in, turning his gaze towards the heavens and dropping hints that the Quadranteds might be gearing up for an encore performance in Texas. Why the hype around the Quadranteds? Well, Musk and space enthusiasts alike are buzzing with excitement, because this particular meteor shower is renowned for its bright fireballs that can outshine even the moon. Recent predictions suggest that the Quadrantes have the potential to steal the celestial spotlight in 2024 promising a cosmic extravaganza like no other. Imagine a celestial light show featuring anywhere from 60 to a jaw-dropping 200 shooting stars per hour. That's the quadrantids for ya. And why Texas? Well, the Lone Star State got a taste of cosmic magic recently, and Musk's predictions hint that the quadrantids might just be the grand finale in the celestial performance. However, just like any grand show, the quadrantids have their backstage crew, factors that can affect how well we get to see this cosmic spectacle. The moon, for instance, can either play the role of an unwitting cosmic stagehand or hog the limelight. Luckily for us, during the recent quadranted peak, the moon was in the waning crescent phase, allowing the meteor shower to shine without too much lunar interference. As for the best times to catch these cosmic shows in Texas, Musk, the SpaceX CEO, recommends being ready for action around evening time. That's when the Quadrantids are expected to take the cosmic stage, treating onlookers to a display that could rival even the brightest stars in the night sky. So, thanks to Musk's celestial insights, Texas might just be in for another round of cosmic wonders. One never seen before. The Quadrantids, with their potential for brilliance and Musk's predictions, are turning our gaze skyward, reminding us that the universe is not just Elon's playground, it's ours to explore and marvel at, one shooting star at a time. Now, let's turn our attention to the Grand Celestial lineup waiting to dazzle us throughout 2024. It's not just the Quadrantids that are stealing the cosmic spotlight. There's a whole roster of meteor showers ready to put on a show, and we've got the backstage pass. Kicking off the cosmic festivities, we have the Perseids, the rock stars of meteor showers. They're set to peak on the night of August 12th and the pre-dawn hours of August 13th. Now, here's the catch. The moon's in on the celestial party, but don't worry, it's playing it cool as a first quarter moon, setting before the radiant gets high in the sky, so it won't steal the limelight, giving you a front row seat to this annual cosmic spectacle. Next up, the Eta Aquarids, putting on the meteoric dance between April 15th and May 27th, peaking around May 4th to 5th. These swift meteors zipping across the sky at about 42 miles per second promise a celestial show. The good news, the moon's in its waning crescent phase, keeping interference minimal for those hunting meteors. Set that alarm for 2 a.m. local time and you're in for a cosmic treat. Fast forward to the end of the year and we're treated to the Geminids, with their peak on the night of December 13th, despite a troublesome waxing half-lit moon. These meteors are bright enough to steal the show. The best part? The Geminids peak around the new moon, arriving on December 12th, offering optimal viewing conditions. 
Speaking of the moon, our silent celestial companion that can either enhance or dim the cosmic glow. Each meteor shower has its moon-related drama. For instance, during the Lyrid's peak on the night of April 22nd, the almost full moon in Virgo might hinder visibility. Similarly, the Orionids on October 20th might experience lunar interference from a waning gibbous moon. Finally, the Leonids, peaking on November 17th to 18th, are dancing with fire, just one day after the full moon, making moonlight their cosmic dance partner. So, how do you make the most of these celestial events? It's all about timing and conditions. For the Perseids, find a dark spot away from the city lights, preferably after midnight. ETA Aquarids demand an early morning rendezvous around 2 a.m. local time. And Geminids, well, that December chill might be worth it. Bundle up, find a dark spot, and get ready for a meteoric feast. Now, let's delve into the Cosmic Ballet, where meteors take center stage in celestial dances that's been choreographed by comets and asteroids. Each meteor shower is a unique performance, and our celestial theater is about to unfold with a cast of starry wonders. First up, the Lyrids, a medium-strength shower that graces our skies from April 16th to 25th every year. These meteors originating from the constellation Lyra are remnants of comet Thatcher, leaving behind a trail of stardust for Earth to trace. This is a cosmic encore from a comet that's been dazzling skygazers for the past 2700 years. Now, imagine waking up in the wee hours of the morning to witness the ETA Aquarids. Active from April 15th to May 27th, these fast meteors cruising at 42 miles per second are children of Halley's Comet. The radiant of these shooting stars, Aquarius. If you're close enough to the equator, you're in for a front row seat, but even those in northern latitudes can catch a glimpse. Midsummer nights come alive with the Perseids, a prolific shower active from mid-July to late August. The Perseids peak August 13th and are a celestial gift from comet Swift-Tuttle, an icy wanderer with a 133-year orbit around the sun, will reveal about 100 shooting stars per hour under a clear sky. Moving on to the Draconids, a shower with a history of dramatic outbursts. Active from October 6th to the 10th, they peak around October 8th to the 9th. This cosmic show is created by debris left by Comet 21P, offering Skywatchers a chance to witness bits of cosmic history. The Orionids, active from September 26th to November 22nd, are a celestial encore from Halley's Comet. Peaking around October 20th to 21st, the shower treats viewers to around 20 meteors per hour under clear skies. The radiant near the iconic constellation Orion the Hunter. And then there are the Torrids, an annual November shower composed of two streams, the southern and northern Torrids. Active from late September to early December, with peaks on November 4th to 5th and November 11th to 12th respectively. They're remnants of Comet Enk. While not the most extravagant, these meteors offer a subtle celestial charm. From there, we'll move on to the Leonids, with their radiant in sickle-shaped head of Leo. The lion grace our skies from November 3rd to December 2nd. Peak on November 17th to 18th, these bright meteors have persistent trains, creating a celestial spectacle. Comet 55P, Temple Tuttle, takes a bow in this cosmic performance. As the year winds down, the Geminids take center stage from December 13th to 24th, peaking on the nights of December 13th to 14th. They promise a meteor range of about 130 to 140 per hour. These meteors shine bright and intensely colored, making them a spectacular celestial finale. And finally, we wrap up the year with the Ursids, active from December 17th to 26th, reaching their zenith on December 22nd to 23rd, with approximately 5 meteors per hour. These meteors are associated with Comet 8P Tuttle, following a 13.5-year elliptical orbit around the Sun. Now, as we stand on the edge of a year brimming with cosmic wonders, one can't help but wonder, are meteor showers merely extraterrestrial phenomena, or do they carry messages from the depths of space? What stories do these shooting stars whisper as they streak across the night sky? And perhaps most provocatively, could these celestial events be more than just displays of cosmic beauty? Are they in fact windows into the unknown, beckoning us to explore the mysteries that lie beyond our earthly confines? There's no doubt that amidst these celestial displays, there may be secrets waiting to be unveiled. In addition to magnitude, scientists also determine the earthquake's depth and exact location known as the epicenter. For the West Texas quake, data showed that the tremor originated relatively close to the Earth's surface, 
which explains why the shaking was felt so widely across the region. Shallow quakes tend to cause more intense shaking over a broader area compared to deeper ones. While natural shifts and movements within the Earth's crust can cause earthquakes, the unusual occurrence of such a quake in West Texas has led to further investigation. Scientists are examining various factors that could have contributed to the seismic event, looking for clues in the geological makeup of the area and any recent activities that might have played a role. This leads us to a pressing and controversial question that's been on many minds. Could human activities beneath the surface be stirring up the ground in unexpected ways? Especially with activities such as fracking going on under Texas's surface. Let's get some more into that. Is fracking to blame? The controversial connection to seismic activity in the wake of the 5.1 magnitude earthquake that rattled West Texas, a question that's been quietly simmering has suddenly surged to the forefront of public debate. Could fracking be responsible? The practice of hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, has long been a point of contention, but recent seismic activity has added a new layer of urgency to the discussion. Fracking involves injecting a high-pressure mixture of water, sand, and chemicals deep into the earth to fracture rock formations and release natural gas or oil trapped within. This technique has revolutionized energy production, especially in regions like West Texas, where it has brought economic growth and energy independence. However, the process isn't without its critics, especially when it comes to its environmental impact. Over the past decade, scientists have observed a noticeable uptick in seismic activity in areas with intense fracking operations. States like Oklahoma, which previously experienced only a handful of minor quakes each year, began seeing hundreds. This increase in earthquakes has led to growing concerns that fracking, or more specifically, the disposal of wastewater from fracking operations, might be contributing to the problem. When wastewater from fracking is injected back into the ground, it can increase pressure along fault lines, essentially lubricating these faults and making it easier for them to slip and cause an earthquake. This isn't just a theory. Numerous studies have confirmed a correlation between fracking wastewater injection and seismic events, particularly in regions that were previously seismically quiet. West Texas, with its rich oil and gas reserves, has become a hotspot for fracking. As the number of wells has increased, so too has the frequency of small earthquakes. While most of these tremors have been minor, the recent 5.1 magnitude quake has raised concerns that something more serious could be at play. Local geologists are now investigating whether the fracking operations in the region could have played a role in triggering this larger earthquake. While it's still too early to draw definitive conclusions, the timing and location of the quake are prompting a closer examination of the practices used in the area. The energy industry, naturally, is quick to downplay the connection between fracking and earthquakes, emphasizing the economic benefits and the rigorous safety measures in place. They argue that while fracking can induce small tremors, the likelihood of it causing a significant earthquake is low. On the other side of the debate, environmental groups and some scientists are sounding the alarm. They point to the mounting evidence of fracking-related seismicity and call for stricter regulations, or even a ban on fracking in seismically active regions. For them, the risk to public safety and infrastructure outweighs the benefits. For now, residents of West Texas are left in a tense waiting game. The ground beneath them has shifted in more ways than one, with the earthquake raising not just buildings, but also serious questions about the future of energy production in the region. Texas on high alert, the role of the Texas Department of Emergency Management. Within minutes of the quake, the Texas Department of Emergency Management activated its emergency protocols, working closely with local authorities, first responders, and federal agencies. Their first priority was to ensure the safety of residents in the affected areas. Emergency crews were dispatched to assess structural damage, while public safety alerts were sent out to keep the community informed. For those living near the epicenter, like in Hermel, this swift response was crucial in preventing further panic and ensuring that help was available where it was needed most. Tidem also set up temporary shelters and provided resources for those displaced by the quake. Teams were on the ground within hours, offering support and assessing the needs of the communities hit hardest by the tremor. 
For many residents, the visible presence of emergency management officials provided a sense of reassurance during an incredibly unsettling time. But TDM's work didn't stop there. In the days following the earthquake, the department ramped up its monitoring efforts, closely watching for any aftershocks or signs of further seismic activity. Using a network of seismometers and satellite data, they tracked the movements beneath the Earth's surface, ready to respond at a moment's notice if another quake were to occur. DEM also began collaborating with geologists and scientists to better understand the underlying causes of the quake. This partnership aimed not only to determine whether fracking or other human activities contributed to the event, but also to develop strategies for mitigating future risks. Their focus wasn't just on reacting to the quake, but on preparing for the possibility of more significant seismic events in the future. The message was clear. While this quake was unprecedented, the state was doing everything in its power to be ready for whatever might come next. For now, Texas remains on high alert. The earthquake may have passed, but the memories of shaking ground and rattling windows linger. The Texas Department of Emergency Management continues to keep a close watch, ready to jump into action at any sign of trouble. And while residents are grateful for the swift response, there's a growing awareness that the state's seismic future might be more active than once thought. This is a valid concern, considering what scientists discovered after tracing the state's seismic history and what it might tell us about the future. A historical perspective. Texas's seismic activity through the years. While Texas might not be the first place you think of when you hear earthquake country, it's had its share of seismic events over the years. The Lone Star State's seismic history is less dramatic compared to places like California, but it's far from uneventful. One of the most notable quakes in Texas history was the 1931 Valentine earthquake. With a magnitude of 6.0, it shook the small town of Valentine in West Texas, causing significant damage and reminding Texans that seismic activity is a reality, even in the heart of the state. Fast forward to 2015, and Texas experienced another significant shakeup with a series of quakes in the Fort Worth area. These smaller but frequent tremors raised concerns about the potential link between hydraulic fracturing, fracking, and seismic activity. This period marked a turning point as it was clear that Texas was not immune to the impacts of modern industrial activities on its geological stability. The Valentine earthquake of 1931 was a wake-up call for Texas, highlighting the need for better building practices and preparedness. In the aftermath, there were significant changes in how the state approached earthquake safety and infrastructure resilience. However, it wasn't until more recent events like the 2015 Fort Worth quakes, that seismic safety truly came to the forefront of public consciousness. The Fort Worth tremors sparked widespread debate and led to increased scrutiny of fracking practices. The state took steps to tighten regulations and improve monitoring, but the dialogue continues as Texans question how much influence human activities have on their geological stability. The recent 5.1 magnitude quake has reignited interest in Texas's seismic activity prompting both officials and residents to reassess their preparedness. As we examine the history of earthquakes in Texas, it becomes clear that while the state has managed past quakes, there is a growing need to understand and adapt to changing seismic conditions. With advancements in technology and better data collection, scientists are better equipped to monitor and predict seismic activity. However, as we've seen with the recent quake, the unexpected can still catch us off guard. Future implications the need for stronger regulations and preparedness. One of the most pressing issues as Texas grapples with the aftermath of the recent earthquake is the need for stricter regulations on activities that might influence seismic activity, such as fracking and wastewater injection. While these industries are crucial to the state's economy, their potential impact on earthquake frequency cannot be ignored. Regulators are now facing increasing pressure to enforce stricter guidelines and monitoring systems. This includes setting limits on the volume of wastewater injected into wells, implementing more rigorous seismic monitoring, and requiring detailed risk assessments before new projects are approved. The aim is to minimize the risk of triggering earthquakes 
while allowing for economic activities to continue. However, the push for stronger regulations is not without controversy. Industry advocates argue that stringent regulations could stifle economic growth and lead to job losses. They claim that the benefits of activities like fracking far outweigh the potential risks and that the data linking these activities to earthquakes is not definitive. On the other hand, safety advocates argue that the cost of not regulating could be far higher, both in terms of potential damage from future earthquakes and the human cost of inadequate preparedness. They stress that proactive measures are essential to protecting communities and preventing disaster. As the debate continues, one thing is clear. The future of earthquake preparedness in Texas will be shaped by a delicate balance between economic interests and safety concerns. Will the state enact tougher regulations to address the seismic risks, or will economic pressures prevail, leaving communities vulnerable to the next big quake? The outcome of this debate could have far-reaching implications not just for Texas, but for other regions experiencing similar seismic risks. As we move forward, the choices made today will determine how well prepared we are for the earthquakes of tomorrow. Till next time.